Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very much for having us here. It's a real honor to be presenting our study results. I'm a general surgery resident from Bogota, Colombia. I have nothing to disclose, as so the, the other authors from the paper. Acute appendicitis is the second cause of acute surgical procedures in the US, presenting almost 17 million cases annually worldwide. This represents a huge financial burden for the health systems. Laparoscopic approach is considered the gold standard treatment nowadays. However, there's still debate regarding the, um, the appropriate antibiotic period of time in the postoperative um, period. Sorry. Moreover, complicated appendicitis comprises a wide spectrum of inflammatory stages, including a gangrenous appendicitis, which, if treated promptly, behaves more similarly uh, to a non complicated appendicitis. Several studies have addressed postoperative antibiotic treatment in this group of patients with tendency for shorter schemes presenting equal results. In light of this information, as part of quality improvement program in our institution, we implemented a fixed scheme of postoperative antibiotic for acute gangrenous appendicitis consisting of a 24-hour um, coverage, including the prophylactic dose. The aim of this study was to analyze the safety and effectiveness of this scheme and its relationship with surgical site infection and unplanned intervention. So we conducted a single center retrospective study in a university-based hospital in Bogota, Colombia through a six-year period of time. The inclusion criteria were patients with intraoperative findings of non-perforated gangrenous appendicitis, and the exclusion criteria were underage patients, pregnant women, and patients receiving antibiotic for other causes, for example, um, ITU or pneumonia. Almost every patient received ampicillin sulbactam as a treatment. The primary endpoint were, was SSI, um, defined as the classification of the CDC, or unplanned intervention, meaning that uh, they went back to the OR or had percutaneous drainage. The secondary endpoints were readmission and mortality during the fir first 30 days after discharge. We reviewed 3,900 charts, uh, and after applying inclusion and exclusion criteria, we, have, we had 487 eligible patients. Demographics and clinical variables were analyzed and compared between these two groups using non-parametric tests. Also, a multivariate logistic regression was adjusted by clinically relevant variables for the primary endpoints. Among the 497 patients included the, in the analysis, the median age was 35 years old. 43% of patients were female, uh, the majority of them being classified as SAS1, and 87% of the procedures were made laparoscopically. Even though 91% of the overall population had localized peritoneal reaction, there was a higher proportion of of two or more quadrant peritoneal reactions, sorry, within the more than 24-hour group. Here it goes, okay. 76% of our patients, no, sorry, 67% of our patients were adhered to the fixed scheme. Among these who required longer curses, the majority were oscillating in three to five days of antibiotic uh, after the, the appendectomy. As expected, the length of stay was shorter in the 24-hour group, uh, and we did not find any increase in SSI nor in planning reintervention within the 24-hour scheme. Also, there was no 30-day mortality in either of the groups. And finally, the only factor that was highly associated with SSI or unplanned reintervention was the degree of peritoneal reaction with an odds ratio of 3.42 compared to patients with localized peritoneal reaction in the multivariate analysis. These study limitations uh, are dependent on its retrospective study, which can increase the selection bias. Also, due to the lack of a classification system, that there can be misinterpretation regarding the peritoneal compromise. Our conclusions were, um, in our institution, 67% of patients were adherent to this fixed scheme without an increase in complications. Um, the longer curses were associated with more peritoneal compromise, which makes us think that uh, this could be a risk, risk factor for SSI and intervention. The lack of a classification, including these peritoneal reaction findings, mes makes it difficult uh, for uh, an external validity for our results. And finally, the standardization of fixed antibiotic timing could aid in shortening length of stay and therefore reducing costs. Also, in patients with gangrenous appendicitis without an extensive peritoneal reaction, a 24-hour fixed IV antibiotic scheme is a safe option. 
Thank you very much.